um, in the remaining second half of the class, I wanted to uh, um, go over exam three because um, you know you, for exam three you haven't had a lot of time since exam two, so I think you might benefit from just uh, um, sharing a. Um, uh, seeing the layout of all the topics that are going to be covered. And exam three is a bit in a weird place. It's, uh, I mean, you know, exam one and exam two had kind of a theme. Exam one was uh, forces and motion. Exam two was, well, dynamics. Um, forces, energy, momentum, rotational motion. And exam four, I'm sorry, exam three, it's a mixture. Um, so there's something that relates to rotation, like static equilibrium, you have to deal with the torque. And in fact, the gravity is a kind of, a, um, it can be a hook into a lot of different things. You can use gravity to do like a circular motion, kinematics, um, you can use universal gravitation to you know, talk about angular momentum conservation. Um, so there's this, uh, bits of mechanics that really relate more to the things that you have covered before in exams one and two. And there are these topics, oscillations and waves, that are more distinct from what we have been doing. Because starting with oscillation, you saw our approach change um, to become more formal and more mathematical. We used the more calculus since we started talking about oscillation than we have ever since the first couple of days of kinematics, right? So, so you know that's a, but you know that's the range of topics that have remained after exam two, and they need to be covered in this class. So, it gets uh, scooped up in exam three um, as your last midterm of the class. So, um, I guess in terms of review, so you will have the lab period uh, today to. Uh, cover oscillations and waves, especially uh, problems involving oscillations and waves. So, um, so you know, I will lay out the topics covered in oscillations and waves, but we'll just leave it there. Um, for the problems dealing with this, we'll do that during the lab section. Um, I want to use maybe 10 or 20 minutes to just uh, bring up all the things that we have covered in this. And hopefully, as I bring that up, they sound familiar to you. If not, to the extent that they don't sound familiar, it's a, an indication that you should be studying. As in, either maybe you should be reading the textbook. If you haven't cracked it open, then like, it doesn't surprise me that if you struggled, if you haven't read the book. <laughs> and um, you can also use the, um, if you don't have Jian Kole, you can also use this book. This is linked from the course website, actually. It's available for free as a PDF. Um, they both cover the same set of topics. So it's, uh, um, the point is, it's not enough for you to hear me speak. It's not enough for you to just passively um, you know, sit and hear. Like you won't remember what you heard. Um, so you have to be reading the, and for one, and we don't cover everything in class. We don't have enough time to do that. So to get, capture everything, you have to be reading the book. And you have to be working on problems. If you are not do, doing those two important things, then it doesn't matter if you come to every lecture. You are still not going to do well. Because it's uh, like, uh, I mean, there's only limited amount of information you can get by hearing alone. So anyways, about, so the reason I'm still speaking, even though I keep telling you, you know, hearing alone won't help, is that I'm hoping that I'll at least point out, uh, make, help you realize what you are missing, so that you can go to these sources to actually fill up what you are missing. So uh, let me, I guess, divide up the uh, board space a little bit to go over that. By the way, um, you know, this study guide has more sections, and I do point out more down here. Um, so, you know, you can look at that on your own later. For now, I'll just leave it here so that I kind of remember which topics we're talking about. So, uh, let me lay them out here. Exam three topics. So, we have gravity. Um, I guess I prefer to call it universal gravitation. Oh, sorry, the black doesn't look right. 
Um, I prefer to call it universal gravitation to kind of separate it from the way we have been handling gravity for most of the semester. So, so let me just call it universal gravitation. And we'll come back to this and uh, mention the things you ought to know in universal gravitation. And uh, one thing I can tell you is that um, this will be the smallest of the four topics covered in the exam. It really comes down to, to test gravity properly, I do have to go back to a lot of previous material. Like one of the most interesting questions in gravity is uh, orbital height of a geosynchronous satellite. And it goes back to circular motion. And I do not intend to test you on kinematics on exam three. That's really the why the final exam is cumulative. For the final exam, I e want and expect you to review kinematics. So you know, hopefully you'll be able to do it there. So, but you know, this is still going to be on the exam. I will test you uh, to the extent that I don't have to force you to do a lot of kinematics uh, as you're trying to answer this. So that's the first topic on the exam, but also the smallest topic. It's probably going to be, a, I cannot imagine it being more than 20% of the exam, probably less, 15%. The next set of topic that's uh, still from the past, the mechanics that we have covered, is static equilibrium. And this is, um, in every sense of the word, it's a leftover topic. As in, if I could have included this in exam two, I would have. But exam two already covered so much that there was just no room to include this in exam two. So it naturally belongs to the exam two, but there was no space to put it. So that's why it's stuck with exam three. Um, so it'll be on exam three. Um, but I guess uh, you can think of this as a, sort of a, a final preview. As in, when you're trying to do static equilibrium, um, it'll be a review of you know, drawing free body diagram, you know, analyzing forces, the kind of stuff you need to do, you have done in exam one, and you need to do again for the final exam. So, um, so this will probably be, I don't know, um, 20, 25% of the exam, maybe even up to 30%. So this is the second slightly more important topic than universal gravitation for exam three. And really, the, um, this is why I reorganized the exam. I wanted oscillations and waves to play a bigger role in the class. As in, uh, people who are going to get A's in this class, I want you to have a solid understanding of oscillations and waves. So in exam three, these will be together a uh, majority of the exam, maybe 60% of the exam. And, you know, and they will occur again on the final exam as one of, I don't know, 11 topic areas or whatever. So, uh, or two of the 11 topic areas. So for the exam three, these oscillations and waves, they are really going to be the biggest portion of the exam. So let me just uh, set out some space for that so that we can just talk about what topics we have covered in oscillations and waves. So oscillations. And waves. I'm not really going to separate them into two topics because they are two interrelated topics. Um, um, the concepts that we introduced in oscillations were important as we were talking about waves, as we were talking about periodic waves. And you know, when we are dealing with the waves, we are actually mostly interested in periodic wave. Even though I do mention the arbitrary waveform, um, but most interesting things deal with the periodic waves, ones that have definite frequency. So, all right, um, I guess I will uh, mention, so in each of these areas, I'll mention um, just uh, some things, starting out with the most uh, important things. 